today we are going to be speaking about the network equity token model applied to startups, specifically crypto startups. So I created this with uh, my partners at Lions Chain Capital. Uh, we created this, uh, we started working on this model about a year ago, trying to answer the question as to what is the ideal way for a business that wants to create a token built on top of a public smart contract platform like Ethereum to engineer the token such that they can both use the token as a fundraising mechanism and capture value as their business grows. Now, for those have been, that have been involved in the industry uh, since 2017, we saw a number of tokens that came to market, which positioned themselves as a, a currency. And in many cases, those currencies were unable to capture value as their networks, if their networks actually launched, uh, they were not able to capture value, which would be translated to a return on investment to their investors. And what we found over time was that creating a payment token was not an effective means of bringing a token to market. So let's jump right into it. First, when you're trying to define uh, your token, you need to ask yourself, why would your business need to have a token at all? In many cases, it's to reduce platform risk, which means that it creates an opportunity for community ownership on the platform. One of the most amazing things about Ethereum and about uh, crypto in general is that we can build platforms which are actually owned by the communities that use them. And by doing so, we ensure that the community's will is represented within the platform. What that means is that we can make sure that if the community wants to have certain changes, they have a voice and that they don't feel censored. And we can distribute ownership in such a way that it reduces regulation scrutiny, meaning that if a certain financial activity is happening within the community, that if the token, if the community itself or the platform is owned by tens of thousands of people all over the world, like Ethereum is owned today, then it is, it is in a at least today, a, a gray area. And what we hope for in the future as investors in this space, that we'll have further regulation clarity, which will show that distributed ownership of networks uh, falls outside of the laws of securities. Another uh, reason why you would want to have a token is the interoperability or composability, uh, where it, and this improves the plat, uh, this, as this improves, the platform risk is reduced meaning that as more and more um, as a, more and more businesses are built on top of whatever platform or service that you bring to market uh, and more people can plug into it so now your token becomes more distributed and it's more likely that your platform or your solution is going to last for a long period of time and community ownership also often enables profit capture and sustainability in the face of potential forks. Why would your community want to fork you out if they have the ability to share in your upside? So one of the things that uh, we found was that you really have to ask yourself, what are the values that you want to bring uh, to launching a token? And do those values align themselves with the general values of the, of the crypto space? So for example, uh, open source and transparent interoperable and composable, uh, consistent and stability, the community not only owning a piece of the upside, but actually getting to determine through governance how that upside, how that future and how that upside is going to be created. And then one of the other things that many of the projects that we looked at at Lions Chain Capital failed to account for was economic sustainability. And economic sustainability, this means that over time is your platform going to be able to fund its future development? Is it going to be able to market itself? Uh, in many instances, as I'm sure that all of us have seen, a, a company or an organization would print a finite amount, they would mint a finite amount of tokens, and then over time, they would sell those tokens into the market. The problem with this approach is that what happens to your business model, especially if you're creating open source code, when you run out of your own tokens? Um, in most cases, when you run out of your own tokens to sell, or if your token doesn't perform well in the market, or the market tanks in general, so then you simply go out of business. And this is high risk for your investors. 
And uh, there's the value of being resistant to technical, economic, and governance capture. So if too many people, uh, too, if too many tokens are owned by a small number of people, then that means that regardless if you have on-chain governance or regardless if you have the ability for multiple people to be able to own it, it's unlikely that uh, it's unlikely that your token will be distributed enough that it can't be controlled by a small group of people. Sometimes that small group of people are the people who minted the tokens, and sometimes that's a third party that's come over and over time purchased a large enough amount of it. And, another, and the last value is unique and competitive value offering, meaning uh, are you trying to be the best? Are you trying to do what you're doing um, better than a centralized non-blockchain powered solution? If you find that these values are reflected in your business, uh, in your crypto business or startup, then it probably does make sense to explore creating your own token. So before we get into the model itself, it's important to look at the list of actors. In most cases, you're going to have developer of the core software, and these are the people that are actually building your application. You're going to have grant recipients, and these are one-off payments. This could be a wallet integration or adding a scalability feature. These are being able to pay somebody to do some, some particular task, which not necessarily is, uh, is consistent over time. Then there's the shareholders of your platform. They're the people that invested in your application, uh, sometimes before you even built anything, when you just had a white paper, and then sometimes it was after you had a proof of concept. The next are the application users, the people that are using the platform to actually uh, benefit from it. And then there's the workers. In many cases, there will be uh, there will be a group of people that are enabling your application to provide value to the application users. So let's look at how this token, uh, what are the needs of each of the actors here? So there's the developers of the core software, they're i.e. the company, and they get paid to improve and upkeep the software on a consistent basis. Then there's the grant recipients. And they're to be rewarded on a one-time basis. As I said, the shareholders, they want to see the upholds. They want to see the upside of the platform. And the application users, they're the ones that are actually going to pay money. And the workers are the ones that are going to provide the service and hopefully uh, receive value and, and get paid. Now, instead of getting paid in a native token, we found that the, some of the most successful platforms, they actually get paid in a, a currency that is clearly defined as money. So that could be something like Ethereum, or that could be a stable coin like DAI or USDC. Now, one of the reasons that makes Ethereum so interesting and other applications so interesting is that you actually still can perform an initial fundraising sale. So uh, there's two different ways that we've seen this. A uh, fixed cap supply of tokens, for example, the million tokens uh, for MakerDAO, or a bonding curve for increase in price, uh, for example, Nexus Mutual. Usually there's some type of allocation to team. In the case of a bonding curve, the team can participate in the initial sale. In the case of a fixed supply, and the team would be allocated a small portion of the supply. For example, it could be 10%. Sometimes it's more, but it should usually be less than, uh, than the majority. And then something else to consider is how do you plan on fundraising at a later time if you want to, uh, if you want to give a boost to your business? So being open for future sales. Sustainability, to get into more details of this, is important that a portion of the profits generated by the business must be captured and funneled to cover innovation, operations, and maintenance. These funds must be delegated by a DAO, which represents the community to prevent revolt. And the business must maintain a reserve at the approval of the DAO, which can be drawn upon to weather the storm while the business works to achieve prof profitability and during lean times. So here's the model itself, and I'm happy to uh, speak with any of you on um, on Twitter or on Telegram. You can message me at MadcapsLaugh to get into more details of this. But following the numbers, the number one, the investors initially fund into a reserve pool. That in in exchange for that reserve pool, they're issued the native token, the native ne network equity token, and that network equity token uh, allows them to vote on distribution of the reserve pool by the company DAO. A certain percentage of the reserve pool will be brought into the company DAO, and then that will be voted on uh, to determine um, how much will go, how much will be issued as stake rewards in bucket eight. Um, it will also be determined um, how much the workers will get paid from the customers. Now we'll see here from bucket number six or, or circle number six that the customers pay money to use the service that's provided by the workers. 
They pay money directly to the workers, and some of the fees go back into the company DAO. It, the money that goes into the company DAO will be used in number 11 to, for a buyback and burn. It'll be used in four for core development, a five in operations, and 12 in grants. And then it will also be, um, be issued back to the investors uh, based on staking. So this, the investors can stake their network equity token both to vote on company policy um, and they can stake it long term to get profit share. Now, this will look very familiar to a corporate infrastructure that already exists in the world. And what we believe is at Lions Chain Capital is that there's many elements of a traditional business which can be applied to token economics, which will ensure that the shares of the business that the investors receive through the form of a network equity token actually reflect the growth of the business. The more money that comes in from number six into the company DAO, the more money that the investors are going to receive in the form of dividends, in staking profit share, and the more that uh, that will be available for a buyback model, which will increase the price of the token. Now, for short, for to be uh, considerate of time, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the profit distribution. The DAO business model will be one which collects fees as a percentage of the profits earned by workers, as well as potential user subscription fees. Payments will be made in ETH or DAI, uh, but we do not intend for the network equity token to be a required interface for the end user. This is a very important part of the model. The end user that wants to use the service, whether it's a, a video streaming service or even a coffee shop that was built as a DAO on Ethereum, the end user only needs to interact with ETH or DAI. They never are forced to interact with your network equity token. Only the investors in your application are, forced, uh, are uh, enabled to use your token. And the token owners realize the upside of the success of the company from two methods, the token buyback, which affects all token holders, and the dividend payouts only to the staking holders of the token. And the, va the DAO votes on distribution terms in order to optimize the needs of the company and its shareholders. When in, in regards to staking, when token holders stake, they stake for lot they stake with lockups for the rights to payouts. And these payouts, the percentage of this will be a variable voted on by the DAO. The staking will enable holders to participate in voting as well as be rewarded for participating in the governance. Um, we think that over time, voting mechanics will grow, and there's lots of uh, interesting, uh, interesting technical uh, aspects, like, for example, variable delay functions, which can be used as voting as uh, anonymous voting mechanics or silent uh, votes, which we think are gonna, we're going to see a lot of really interesting experiments happen throughout the future of 2020. And the areas of governments will, will revolve around profit distribution, allocation of reserve capital, code upgrades, for example, time locks, uh, roadmaps, and the grant applications. We see that the reserve pool acts as a check and balance against exit scamming from the founders of the organization, and it gives the token holders a right to withdraw cash without the need for explicit legal recourse or market selling of a potentially low volume token, meaning that, uh, to that investors, they can always sell back or burn their network equity token in order to rage quit from the reserve pool. And if you're familiar with uh, Malik Dow, you'll be familiar with this method, uh, which is where we uh, we learned it from. And we believe that this is an elegant mechanism which can be introduced, which can introduce trust to a new Dow based business model. Uh, we're we're out of time now, so I'll just end up by saying that community ownership is uh, very important for the future of the space and for the future of token issuance. We believe that all tokens, uh, all businesses that are issued on Ethereum can adapt some form of the network equity token, and this will ensure a bright future for the things that are built on Ethereum. Thanks for talking, um, and we would love to speak to any, Lions Chain Capital would love to speak to any uh, businesses that are building DeFi products or beyond or on Ethereum or other uh, other smart contract public blockchain platforms. And we'd love to have your help with the community to evolve the network equity token model and help bring it to market. Thank you very much.